indeed. Well, we've mapped out the case for a political project for men, and Charlotte Raven has dismissed it uh, politely. Our four guests have been listening to the arguments and thinking about some answers. So let's start with uh, men and work, Oliver. Um, what's your take on it? Well, I, I think that there's no question that for low-income men, there's been a huge increase in what are so-called gender-neutral jobs, which encourage cooperative, cooperative behaviour. And there's no question that men aren't as good at being cooperative and the multi-skilling that you mentioned in the film. Um, can they be, though? Well, of course they can. I mean, you know, um, you know again, you know, highly socialised, highly educated men um, can be very cooperative. But, um, and, but obviously low-income men, for all sorts of reasons, the 40% divorce rate, they don't have a male role model in the home in enormous numbers of cases. Um, possibly, Helena will no doubt say, um, genetic reasons. I think that's an open question. So you think, do, do, I mean, do you think these new jobs that are coming up, which, would, which would men would have to get, are actually gender neutral, are sort of equally available to men as things stand? Yeah, there's absolutely no reason, intrinsic reason, in my opinion, why men shouldn't be just as good at working in a call cool service place or a McDonald's or, I mean, remember that most, you know, most of the new jobs that have come about are actually part time. And, don't, and, and remember also that men have been brought up to think they've got to be the breadwinner and they've got to, got to have a full-time so job, do you think whereas women don't, are much happier to have part-time jobs. Do you think they'll actually go for these uh, call centre type jobs and these flexi-hour jobs and these uh, high communications jobs? I'm sure they will, yeah. eventually, yeah, of course. They, they won't have any choice. But in the meantime? In the meantime, you've got a vast number of men who, I mean, I say vast number, I don't want to exaggerate because I don't think men are redundant, but there are perhaps a quarter of the population who have virtually no, you know, I mean, something like 45% of men have uh, less than three GS GCSEs and none above grade C. So, you know, they're not qualified to do anything else. Dieran, do you think men can adapt to these jobs? I think so, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that maybe um, the film earlier say underestimated is the amount um, of men who are doing various sort of part-time sort of jobs. I think that um, when we're seeing a, um, a new beginning of the kind of men as hunter-gatherer, men looking out to try and find a space to create a new type of job where, if you like, the old industries aren't taking them in or else the old industries have gone. I know a number of men who have found it difficult to get jobs in, um, you know, if you like, in the mainstream. So they're going out trying different sort of different kinds of free, freelance jobs. For example, you know, the World Cup very recently. I know a number of men who, who um, you know, who design shirts and sort of T-shirts and World Cup bottles and this kind of thing. And I see a number of men looking, they know that the job is going to be out there for them anymore and they have to go and get it. So in a sense, it's one of the consequences of Thatcherism. I do see an entrepreneurial spirit amongst um, men, particularly amongst, um, if you like, men at the slightly lower end who, who aren't going to be able to walk into the kinds of jobs that middle class men walk into. So, you know, there are a number of trends, but there's no doubt that um, a number of young men are alienated from, if you like, the mainstream workplace and that this is a problem. Helen, right do now. you think this is just a problem of transition? That what's happened is that men have lost uh, quite a lot of jobs in sort of more traditional areas while where husky men were at uh, a premium and now they're just going to take a little bit of a while to adjust to places where they have to use softer voices and more cooperative language. There are two problems with the shift in jobs. One is, as you say, the content of the job, whether you need strengths or whether you need a soft voice. And that's not necessarily a problem. Uh, men, on average, can obviously be trained to have a sufficiently soft voice. Yeah, three examples around this table. <laughs> Absolutely, and aren't they charming? And, but the other problem is a much more serious one, which is that, as we noticed in the film, these are very low-status jobs. And status is a much more serious problem for men than it is for women. Really? And this is an evolved psychological characteristic. It's been around for two million years, and we have to recognize it. Um, sorry, way... is, sorry, let me just clock that one mm. to make sure I've got it. Mm. Um, your argument would be that men are conditioned by virtue of deep <laughs> genetics or whatever to require status. Well, it's very simple. Um, if, you, if you look at the different mating strategies for men and women, um, men care about fertility in a woman. Women care about whether a man can provide the resources. That's what she needs from a man. Now, for two million years, we didn't have resources. We didn't carry them around with us on the Pleistocene Plains. What we did was women looked for men who had promise of providing those resources. And those are men who have status, who other men listen to, who win in competitions, who are at the front, who, who are good, who are fast, who are quick, who can flash around the fact that they're going to be top. Now, 
Because of this, men have a very much stronger psychological disposition to put value on status than women do. And indeed, women put very high value on men's status. And that's the problem with these jobs. Um, they're low status jobs. It's a problem with the jobs and presumably them. also means that it's more of a problem for men if they're unemployed than Absolutely. it is for women. Absolutely. Unemployment or getting low status employment is much more of a problem for men than it is for women. Diana. I'm slightly baffled by that take because it seems to suggest that men require status to such an extent that they won't apply for these low status jobs but on the other hand being unemployed is more of a problem for them too well if they find being unemployed so intolerable then surely they would be applying for low status jobs in order to get out of that situation or committing crime or committing exactly. suicide exactly well, well i suppose that, that that must be the logical conclusion but um it doesn't really tally with the figures because there are a lot of men who remain unemployed don't commit crime and don't commit suicide but just loaf about um, I do think Feeling it's true. Depressed. I do think it's true to say that a lot of the jobs that have been created are part-time jobs and they're low-paid jobs, and that they are jobs that um, a lot of women have felt constrained to apply for because they've got childcare responsibilities and because they don't feel that they want to work full-time. Now, it's interesting to me that this is being presented as a problem for men. Uh, maybe we should be looking at it as a problem for women, which is why are so many women clustered into low-paid, low-status part-time jobs? Answer, because we don't have adequate childcare provision. Maybe we should be continuing with a political project for women rather than worrying about men who are, are, are too upset and have their egos too bruised to apply for a low-status job. Oliver, do you, going back to Helena's point uh, a moment before we to uh, go back to what Diana just said, do you accept this notion that there could be some deep reasons why unemployment actually does matter more for men?